While ProMotion NG's many layer features allow you to work on separate parts of an image without damaging other aspects of the image, there are many situations where you might need to work on a single layer. In this example, we have a full retro style game screen mockup, and we want to simulate a vertical color change for the currently solid background color. First, I'll quickly use ProMotion's vertical color ramping ability to create the range of colors I'll want in the sky. By creating the latest version of the color I'll want at the bottom of the sky, several indices directly below the original sky color, then pressing R and then clicking on the original sky color. Next, I'll click on the stencil icon to reveal the Edit Stencil options in the palette box. Now I can left click on any color in the palette to protect it and right click to deselect it. I can also click on this color picker icon and click on the color I wish to protect in the image itself. If I right click the color, I'll deselect it. I can click this icon to invert my stencil selection and can click this icon to clear the entire selection. A really useful hotkey is the E key. When you press this, you will enter stencil color selection mode and any color you left click on in the image will become part of the stencil selection and any color you right click in the image will become deselected and be left unprotected by the stencil selection. When you hold the E key, you can draw with the left or right mouse button to add or subtract organically to the stencil. In this case, I want to protect all colors except the sky color, so I'm just going to select that single color and then invert the selection. This option called Auto Update Stencil is very important to understand. If it's turned on, then every time you finish drawing into the canvas, the stencil will update itself so that if the color or colors you just drew down are supposed to be protected colors, then they will be protected. And this also allows you to use your stencil across an animation where each time you switch to a new frame, the stencil will update with it to protect the colors you want protected. Now I'm just going to use the filled rectangle tool, select the lighter colors one by one, and start to manually add the gradient to the sky. Because Auto Update Stencil is turned off, I can keep iterating until I'm happy with the results. It should be noted that this works with any fill mode, so you could use this method to replace a single color or set of selected colors with a repeating brush pattern as well. In this second example, I have a single layer image with a character and the background sharing a color index, but I want the character to no longer use that color. The first thing I do is make sure I have the replacement color somewhere in the palette ready for use. I click the stencil icon, use the color picker to click on the color that I no longer want in the player sprite, and invert the selection. Because the background graphics share the same color, lots of the background is currently unprotected and I can accidentally add the new player color into it if I'm not careful. To help avoid this, I can actually use the drawing tools to edit the current stencil selection. Just choose Mode, Selection, or press Ctrl and F1 and any drawing tool will now allow me to add to the selection using the left mouse button and subtract from the selection using the right mouse button. Of course, entire stencil selections could be created from scratch using this selection drawing mode with no selection of specific colors required. I'll then click the standard palette RGB slider icon, press F2 to go back to standard painting mode, make sure I have the new replacement color selected, Choose a medium sized round brush and press D for normal drawing mode. I can now draw to replace all of the old colors shared with the background with the new color dedicated to the player character sprite. One last trick you can use the stencil feature for is to isolate a character sprite from the background in a single layer game mockup image. Now that the player sprite doesn't use any of the same color indices as the background graphics, I'm going to select all of the colors in the character and then reverse selection. Now when I press the B key and rectangular select to grab the player sprite as a brush, you'll see I've quickly grabbed it without picking up any of the background graphics along with it. Thanks for watching.